Thank you for watching. In 2016, Dr. Ansuya Mudli joined students from 42 other countries to study yoga in India as part of the Yoga Instructors course. Since her return to South Africa, she is on a mission to share the benefits of yoga with her community. We join one of her classes to find out more before Anuradha shares her culinary secrets in conscious cooking. You may feel some discomfort in the region of the neck or the shoulder. Just breathe into those areas. Especially if there's a problem with the ergonomics, especially when you're sitting in the office chair or if you have a bad pillow or the mattress is not right, you find that this is where the discomfort or the stress knots will manifest. I was very fortunate in the year 2016 um, when I was given a scholarship uh, to study the yoga instructor program through the S. Vyasa Swami Vivekananda Institute of Yoga in Bangalore, India. Subsequent to that, um, I was very passionate about taking yoga forward and I continued to do a postgraduate uh, qualification in yoga therapy. So we would use yoga in dealing with all of the psychosomatic ailments and diseases, especially diabetes, cardiac problems that affect our community at large. The yoga is very aligned to the teachings of Swami um, Sri Satya Sai with regard to, in particular, the Educare programs, where he looked at uh, the end of education is character. And he always emphasized the fact that as much as you can look at secular education, there was a very strong need to couple that with spiritual education. So if you're coming back to yoga in terms of its derivation, it's, um, it's derived from the Sanskrit term yuj. And yuj, in fact, means union. So it's a union between your internal energy and the universal energy. As a spiritual organization, we've introduced yoga to our devotees as a free offering a few years ago. Uh, devotees really enjoyed the experience of yoga and it helped them uh, in their spiritual endeavors as well. So we thereafter started, or started the Sudha Mandir Institute of Yoga uh, so that devotees are able to experience the deeper sense of uh, the unity of body, mind and spirit. That is really the essence of yoga. So it would start with prayer um, and then we would go with some uh, loosening exercises, uh, which is very important as pre-yoga uh, session and uh, that is your Satila Karana Vayayama. So once we've done the loosening exercises, we go into um, a little bit of the asanas. And uh, when we do the asanas also, we try to bring in the four different positions. And that is, for example, the standing, which is Tadasana, uh, sitting, which is Dandasana, uh, the prone position, which lies on your um, a tummy, which is Makarasana, and the other final position is where you lie on your back, and that is a supine position, position which we sometimes refer to as Sharvasana. So, obviously, in the Sharvasana position, we end up with meditation. So, make sure that your palms are on either side are facing upward. Your feet are absolutely relaxed. From the toes, we head to in a linear position. Namaste, Venakam, Hare Krishna, welcome to Conscious Cooking. Today, we're taking our inspiration from that lovely Mediterranean Greek island with the spinach and phyllo pastry called Spanakopita. For what we're making, we've got about 300 grams of spinach that has been steamed and then chopped up. We're going to use a little bit of asafoetida or hing. We're going to use black pepper some sesame seeds, we need some salt, olive oil, butter and some feta cheese. We start our spanakopita by 
sauteing our spinach in a little bit of butter, maybe about a tablespoon of butter and some olive oil, maybe a tablespoon of olive oil. And to this butter, olive oil, spinach mixture, we're going to add about half a teaspoon of hing or asafoetida, about half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a little bit of salt, because most of the salt is actually going to come from the feta cheese that's going to be finishing off this spanakopita. So be very careful about how much salt you use in this mixture. Now you'll know that you've already steamed your spinach, so your spinach is cooked. You're just basically giving it some spice and flavor. So it's ready to add in now our feta cheese, which we're going to crumble in. And you can use as much feta cheese as you like. And stir it in. Right, so our filling is actually ready. We're going to just let it cool down for a few minutes while we get our pastry ready. In this damp dishcloth, I have my phyllo pastry that I'm going to be using for spun up kikopita. What we're going to do is we're going to cut it into little strips. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use two strips of phyllo pastry for each phyllo triangle that we're going to make. We're going to butter each strip gently and then we start with the actual phyllo triangle by placing some of our filling which is now cooled. Let's start filling by placing a small portion of our filling at the edge of our phyllo pastry and then start folding it up, not unlike we would a samosa. And just a little hint of butter as we get to the edges to close up and we place it onto our baking dish. I'm going to again put a hint of butter on the top of the spanakopita and finish it off with some sesame seeds. Right, and we're going to continue doing that until we've finished all of our filling. We're now going to bake our spinach phyllo triangles in a preheated oven of 180 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. We want the pastry to be nice golden brown and we want a toasted sesame seed finish. It's been 25 minutes since we put our spanakopita into the oven, so let's go have a look. And it's exactly like what we want. It's golden and the sesame seeds are nicely toasted. It looks delicious. have a Greek specialty, spanakopita, to enjoy with friends and family.